and as you can tell by the title of this video, it's time for another book to movie talk. And this time I'm talking about Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I'm going to put a little disclaimer here, that are no real spoilers in this video, but if you don't want to know anything about the movie or the differences between the book and the movie, then it's probably best you don't watch this video. I actually picked up this book because of the news that it was going to be made into a movie, and in particular because Tim Burton was going to be directing it. I am a really big Tim Burton fan, so that's what really drove me to pick up this book. It was never something that I'd really heard of before, and without this movie, it's likely I probably wouldn't have started reading it, and then gone on to enjoy the series, and love the series as a whole as much as I do. So naturally, as you tend to be if you've read a book, and you're going to see an adaptation of it, there are some things that can make you a bit apprehensive. From the trailers that I saw, it seemed a bit too feel good in a sense, but the way that Tim Burton styles his films, that was just on point and I was so down for that. So I went to see the film opening weekend and initially after seeing it I was very mixed on it. A lot of things that I thought did and didn't work, but the more that I took the time to process what I'd actually seen, I do actually really like the film a lot but it is not without its flaws. It's not exactly a Hunger Games, but it's not an Allegiant either. One thing I absolutely love about Tim Burton's films is the aesthetic. They're always so aesthetically pleasing to look at, and that was one thing that I just loved while watching this film, is that it has that unique style to it that you associate with Tim Burton, and it fits so well for this world. You had the kind of dark colour tones for the modern day world when you have Jacob exploring this abandoned orphanage and the contrast of that to the bright colours that you have when we're in the loop world. There's this one scene where Jacob gets shown the moment when Miss Peregrine has to reset the loop to stop the bomb going off and destroying the orphanage so that they can stay in this loop forever and that scene was so hauntingly beautiful that that was the moment when I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> also, it was nice to have a Tim Burton film that didn't have Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter at the front of it. It was nice to kind of take a break from that. But there is no Danny Elfman score for this film. I can't remember who it is who did the score music for this film, but I know that it's not Danny Elfman. So it was a nice breath of fresh air if you're very familiar to Tim Burton's works. The beginning feels very separate to the middle and the ending because it just feels so disjointed and we're kind of plodding along trying to find our footing and trying to establish the story and the book is quite slow but it just takes quite a bit too long to work out where we actually are and for the characters to kind of establish themselves on screen. So everything before Jacob gets to this island kind of seems just out of place almost. In terms of characters, Eva Green absolutely killed it. She was so good as Miss Peregrine and she is the character that drives this entire film. She is the one where when she's on screen her presence is so prominent. Her look the way that she acted the character out, it just felt like I was actually watching Miss Peregrine being brought to life on screen. Asha Asa Butterfield, I don't know how you say his name, who plays Jacob, when the casting came out for him, he looks like Jacob. He looks how I imagined the character to be when I read the books, but acting-wise, it's not very good. He just doesn't seem to engage with the character at all and it kind of feels like when you'd have to do drama classes in school and you had to do a performance and you just didn't really care or really want to do it. I didn't see any of the aspects that made me really like that character in the book coming through in the film. He just didn't seem to really react to anything that happened that well and in the way that you would expect given what the story actually entails. Samuel L. Jackson plays the baddie in this film and he kind of ruins it for me. You have this build up to his entrance to the film and then he shows up and it's kind of like, is this it? I mean, the jokes were funny in places but it kind of made a mockery and made it seem like 
the reason that all of these peculiar children and these imbrims were terrified of this group of people was for absolutely no reason. You had this real sense of fear and that something bad was going to happen because things were going too good and you saw the hollows which were freaking terrifying and you see all of the process of how Samuel Jackson's character became what he is known as to the peculiars and then he shows up and it's just kind of so anticlimactic. In terms of changes there are quite a lot including the ending but there is enough of an essence from the book where if you are a fan of the books you will be able to recognise that in the film it's not like they're two completely different versions of the same story. One thing I really liked is that things are explained so much better in the film compared to the books. The books, while I absolutely love them, they're so heavy and things are kind of hard to follow especially when you get more and more into the story as the books go on but in the film things were explained in such a not simplistic way but in a way where it just made it easier to understand you got told about how the loops work what you have to do in order to make a loop and the jobs of the imbrins and what miss peregrine's job actually entails around just looking after these children one big change that i can't understand i didn't when it first came out and i didn't understand it either when i saw the film is two characters are switched in their roles. In the books you have Olive who is the girl who has the ability to fly and then you have Emma who is the girl with the fire powers who has the links to Jacob's grandfather and has the kind of will they won't they with Jacob. In the film they have swapped places so Olive in the film is the one who had the relationship with Jacob's grandfather and now has the will they won't they with Jacob and Emma is in Olive's role but their names are swapped as well so you have Olive as you perceive her in the book in the role of Emma and her name is Emma and then you have Emma from the books in Olive's role but her name is Olive but she still has the fire powers so it's I, I've tried to understand and I hope it's made sense what the change actually is but it really put me off in the film because it was just so confusing. I don't know whether the actress is more well known and they thought she would work better having more screen time or if her power in particular was more interesting and something a bit different that they wanted to put at the forefront of the story but it just... it. It works in a way but if you're looking at it from a book to movie point of view it's so confusing and it's a change that I just I don't understand. Apparently the film is number one in America and Ransom Riggs books went to number one on the New York Times bestseller list for fiction series so it's all going well it seems however the ending is different to the book and it's tied up in such a way that if they even considered making Hollow City they couldn't really without completely going off the actual book plot so I think it's going to be one of those things where it's just this one movie and in a way I kind of hope it just becomes that one movie which is a shame because I really do enjoy Hollow City and there are things in that that I would like to see in a visual format but if you're jeopardising the story in place of just making it for the sake of it then I'd rather it was just kept with this one film. Also Tim Burton has a little cameo in this film and it's such a split second thing if you're paying attention but it just made me giggle a little bit. It's a shame that Ransom didn't have some kind of cameo but you know what can you do? Also the pictures, the pictures that play such a prominent role in the book are present in the film and that factor made me so happy. You have this beautiful scene at the start of the film as the um, intro credits are rolling where you see all of these photographs done in the kind of Tim Burton way and throughout the film you know, thing references 
I made to these photographs. You know, Jacob's granddad shows Jacob these photographs of Miss Peregrine and these children while he tells Jacob all of these stories about these children and this time he spent at this orphanage. So it was nice that they paid homage to the source material in that way and it's something that it made me happy that they just kept that unique aspect that is something that makes the book so good. That's all I really have to say about the Miss Peregrine film. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be back with a new video soon. Bye!